This is a 15th video in this series working with the pool table model in Blender. And in this video, we're going to unwrap the tip and rubber bumper ends of the pool cue. So we'll select those and take them into edit mode. Select all. Use the U key, unwrap, and that'll set the two ends into the image editor. And these could perhaps use a little bit of moving around. So we can select them. Use Control L and select one vertices to select the one. And move that up off of the edge. Perhaps scale it up a little bit so it's not so small. Control L on this one. And scale it down a little bit so it's not so big. Rotate it around by 90 and grab it and place it in a little more reasonable place on us and save the UV face layout so scripts save UV face layout size 512 ok and this one I'll call simply tip and save that so we'll save that and now we have the two images for making our UV wraps. So let's exit out of that. Have a look in that folder. Here's the tip. And the Q is... Here we go. This should be the right one. So we'll open that up. Hopefully. Oh, there it goes. Nice timing put that back in there. So we established that the top was the was the rubber bumper or the grip end of the cue. So I'm going to start off by setting up a little measuring line and I'm just going to box select a region down around where the grip would be. And it's good to remember that the scale of this is a little weird. Um, in between the center line on the UV face layout compared to the actual model this line is quite forward on the model so there's a bit of um, of distortion in sizes in the UV face layout that we should try to consider I'm just going to stroke this selection and I'll do it with one pixel because it's a measuring line and stroke that and that's going to give me an idea for where my grip's going to be and open my layers dialog, add a new layer. I'll use a fill type of white, OK. Blots out the image just like before, select all. Reduce the opacity of this layer <coughs> so that I can see my measuring lines. And I'm going to use the stro or the path tool to draw a pathway. And I'm just going to make a zigzag line going Oh, every second row here to that measuring line. Just zigzag across the image. And as long as the final point is in the same place as the starting point, it should work out good. So I'll do one more line here to complete that. And I'll stroke that path. So I'll go edit stroke path. I'll use a line width of three pixels and stroke that. Use the bucket fill tool. Fill with foreground color. And I'm going to need to change the threshold otherwise I'm going to get some white squares around all the edges. And Well looking at that stroked path everything didn't work out that great for that and I'm actually going to need to come and Fill that in a little bit. So I'm going to put a black dot. Zoom in a bit. To make sure that closes that end up. But it's outside of my image. And that's good there. So I'll fill this in. And these, this is the white dot pattern. And I'm going to leave that the way that it is. Because I think that'll work out okay. <clears throat> now for the rest of this image. Um... I think filling it with a wood grain would be fine. So I'm going to use the color picker tool 
and select everything. Open up my patterns dialog, choose a wood grain type of color, something a lot lighter than the previous wood grain I used, and just fill that in and save this. So I'll file. Oh, actually, I'll need to increase the opacity of this layer, delete the background layer, flatten the image so that it saves properly as a bitmap, file, save as, and I'll go with q.bitmap. .bmp, save that, save, close this image down, and find the tip image. And in the tip image, for the back side of the pool queue, I can just fill this in with a pattern. So let's look at our patterns, choose one that we figure would look okay on the back end. I'm going to go with that, that should be okay. Fill with that pattern. Perhaps I want to darken that in. And, oh, I guess I need to undo that. A bit hasty there. I need to add a new layer first. So I add that layer, reduce the opacity, and now fill that in. So we need the layer to be our image. So I'll fill that in. Adjust the colors. I'll change the levels a bit. To darken it up. So that it sits more like a rubber bumper type of thing. And OK that. And that pattern should be OK for that. For the other side of the pool cue, the tip, we have a choice with that. We can fill this in or not. Um, I'll select all. It would be kind of common for this end of the pool cue to be a little bit off white. So we could fill that with like something a little bit off-white, perhaps a cream color. So let's pick a cream color. Let's first set a white. Move that up into a creamy kind of color. OK, fill that in. So fill with foreground color. That's just a little bit off-white. And we can use a paintbrush tool. Select a brownish color. Something that would resemble a leather tip for our the tip of our cue. Set up the size of our paintbrush. So we're going to bring that up until it's bigger than that circle. And that should be okay there. And we'll line the paintbrush up so it doesn't intrude on on the other area. And one way we could do that is we could, from where we're at, invert our selection. And that won't allow us to paint inside of that square. So even if we're right overlapping, it won't paint inside of that previous selection because it's now inverted and where we can paint is inverted as well. We'll set up a quick blue color for the color of the chalk. OK. Reduce the size of our paintbrush. Not by that much, though so that we can get a blue dot inside of that. And perhaps that was a bit small. So go up a bit. And that should work out OK anyways. So I'll save this. Return the opacity. Delete the background layer. Flatten the image. File. Save as. Tip.bitmap. and save. And that's the two images. I'm running out of time for this video, so in the next video we'll look at these on on the pool queue and finish up the pool queue. And until then, happy modeling.